Yes, Richard Brooks here. Okay, let's go back over to these thousands because we never did those. So on the thousands, of course we're going to identify the place value first. You should have underlined the two. We say, according to our steps, look at the digit to the right. If it's five or more, raise it up. Less than five, leave it alone. Either case, follow with zeros. So here, the, the seven, that stays. The two, are we moving that up or leaving it alone? Yeah. And either way, we're following it with zeros. We don't replace the two with zeros. That's why we underline that one, to make sure that stays the same or moves up a digit. You never make that a zero. Uh, it won't. You never replace it with a zero. <clears throat> On the next one, we underline our nine here. The two again, that says you don't leave that alone. So we should get 9,000 out of that. Did you get 9,000 out of that? Yeah. Awesome. Last one, we're looking at the one here. That's our place value. The eight says you're going to move that one up a notch, one digit, six, seven, two, follow the zeros. How many were three for three on that? Good deal. Awesome. Okay, next over here, we're looking at hundreds. First one, the first hundreds is four. Is that four going to move up or is that four going to stay the same? So we'll have three, five, zero, zero. Now I have a question for you. Does this five make this three move up to a four, or should I stop right here? No. Stop right there. Just stop right there. If I had asked for thousands, I would have asked for thousands. So we don't have to continuously round. Just do it one step, and then you're done. Okay, next one we're looking at the two. Is that two moving up or staying the same? Staying the same. According to that four, yeah, it is. So we're going to have the 76,200. And lastly, I want to see if you got this one right. This is a good one. We're going to underline the 9. Because that's our hundreds. We look at the digit to the right. It's a 6. That 6 says we should move that 9 up a bit. But where does it go? OK, so what happens here is kind of like carrying when you're adding. What happens is this digit says that our place value needs to move up one, one notch, one digit. But it has no place to go. You've overloaded this place value, so you are going to make this a zero, but this one has to go up as well because you've overloaded it. It has to go somewhere. So here's what the answer should be. Nine stays the same. Seven stays the same. This has to go somewhere. This has to go up to ten. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. But you can't fit ten in one spot, so you're carrying it. It's like you put the little one up there. That's essentially what you're doing. That becomes the nine, and then you follow that with zeros. I got that. Good for you. If you didn't, well, now you know. Practice it next time. I do need to show you one mistake that often people make. I kind of talked this, about this on the grades the very first day of class. Um, if I asked you to round this number to the thousands and gave you 6,495. We're talking about which digit here in the place value of the thousands? Six. Here's what people do if they make a mistake on this. What people do is go, oh, okay, it's no problem. The five rounds the nine to a ten. The ten carries over to this four. That becomes a five. The five rounds the six to a seven. Do you see the, the error in logic there? We can't really do that. What we have to do is ignore these digits. We look just at the digit to the right. This actually rounds to 6,000. And if you think about it, if we're talking about the nearest 1,000 here, 495 is closer to 6,000 than it is to 7,000. Do you get that point? You can't just continuously round. That's not the way this works. We can't do that. How many will understand what I just talked about there? Good, all right. Well, we're done with rounding. Now, how we use rounding oftentimes is to estimate. And this is the way you do math quickly if you don't have to be so specific. So we'll take a moment, just a moment, to go over some estimating. There's really only one thing you need to know about estimating, and that's how to round. And it happens to be where to round. Do you round first or do you round after you add or subtract? And the answer is if you're going to estimate something, 
it really wouldn't do a whole lot of good to add it up and then round it. If you're going to estimate and you want to do it quickly, the idea is let's round it first, make easier numbers, then add them up. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so if we're going to estimate here, we want to round first. And then we'll add or subtract. Don't do it the other way, otherwise you just waste time and effort. We don't want to do that. Let me give you one example real quick and then we'll move on. So let's say the problem said this. Had this and it said I want you to estimate this at the hundreds place value. Estimate at the hundreds. Estimate at the hundreds. What do you think I should do first? Should I add this all together and then round to the hundreds? Or should I round to the hundreds and then add it all together? If, I'm, if I want an exact answer, that's where you add, right? That's where you add it all together right now. If I'm just estimating, I want to know roughly how many hundreds I'm talking about, we're going to round first. That's what estimating is. It says round it first, and then add it together. So what I'd like you to do now is take some time, round each of these to the hundreds if you haven't done that already. Hey, what's our first value we should be adding? What did you get? 300. Perfect. How about the second one? 700. Awesome. Next one? Very good. And lastly? 300. 300 or 400? What is that one? 300. You don't do the 9 to the 5, the 5 to the 4, right? No. All right. Does that sound like a rap song almost? Okay. Not so much? Okay, let's add these up. See, the reason why we round first is so that we can create columns of zeros. That's nice. That means it's really quick for us. If you were to add this first and then round, you'd just be wasting a whole lot of time. If we were only caring about the hundreds anyway, this will do it for us. So zeros are very nice to add. This we can create some tens out of it. Ten plus four is fourteen. Carry that one. We have twenty-four hundred. Let's round to the hundreds. Did you get twenty-four hundred? Perfect. All right. Well, believe it or not, that was section 1.4. Just had us round and estimate. Remember, this, this first chapter, it's a lot of review. We're almost done with our review. We have just a couple more sections left. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is how to multiply some whole numbers. We'll talk a little bit about area, which is very, well, not similar, but along the same lines as perimeter. We'll get on into dividing, order of operations, and then some variables. Now, at least in the chapter 2, that'll be some new stuff. So let's take a break right now from this 1.4 stuff, the rounding and estimating. We'll talk about 1.5 and refresh your memory on how to multiply numbers.